Hello and you are very welcome to the second episode of Teachers for Palestine YouTube series. In this episode, we talk to Lamise Tommy, who is a 17 year old school student from Ramallah. She talks to us about the apartheid walls that are found in Palestine. These walls designed to keep the population of Palestinians under control. Um, and she also speaks about other methods of control that are used to control the population. And she gives her experience of that as a secondary school student and some of the difficulties her and her peers face when simply trying to travel from one town to the next, when going to school, when trying to get an ID card, uh, all methods of complete and utter control. So I think you really enjoy this episode and I think we will all agree what a great speaker and spokesperson for her people that Lamise is. Uh, first, I'm going, I'm going to talk about the apartheid wall. Here in Palestine, there's two apartheid walls that divided Palestine into around three, three pieces of land. The first one, what they say, Israel, including Jerusalem. The, the, the second piece of land is, is West Bank, which is uh, surrounded with a wall that was built in 2002. And in 2004, the International Court uh, uh, ruled that this wall was illegal and demanded that Israel stop constructions on it. But uh, until that point, after two years, they, they, they already built 70% uh, of it. And the 30% was just uh, watchtowers and checkpoints and doors to, to prevent or uh, to provide us from entering, uh, from entering Israel, or what they call Israel. That, uh, that wall surrounded around 70, 770 kilometers of the West Bank, which is around 10%. And there is a buff zone, a buff zone around that wall, which is around also 10% of the West Bank. So that wall is... Uh, stealing 20% of the west bank which is not uh, which is not uh, which is not a no, small uh, piece of land uh, as i mentioned it's around 70 uh, 770 kilometers and 140 of it, uh, around 140 kilometers of it is around jerusalem the third piece of land uh, is gaza that was that wall was built in two thousand in two thousand six. That wall makes uh, the Israelis control Gaza, uh, control the products, food, gas, and mes and medicine that enter Gaza for around now eighteen years. Uh, Israeli uh, the Israelis also steal the stole sorry Gaza's uh, Gaza Sea and give them only around six miles to fish. And if one, if anyone tries to fish uh, over that that six miles, he will get shot. Uh, their excuse about building the wall is to protect the Israelis and their houses from the Palestinians who resist. But the protection thing is not that true because they are building settlements around Palestine Palestinian cities and villages. In West Bank, there is around one, 140 settlement with around 700, uh, 700 uh, Israelis living on it, 700, sorry, 700,000 Israeli living on it. The biggest, uh, we have three biggest settlements in West Bank, which is uh, Ma'ali Adumim around Ramallah, Josh Atzion around Hebron and Irael in the north of the West Bank. Uh, the wall, of course, have many effects on our life. The most, they are uh, around the economy, family, and of course, occupation. Uh, this wall steals many agricultural uh, lands, which cause, which is a main, which caused a main problem in the Palestinian economy. And the wall uh, separating families. For example, I have uh, relatives, and uh, I have relatives in Jerusalem and Gaza. I can't visit because of the wall checkpoints and all the Israeli occupation process, which is very hard to to do. 
Uh, as I mentioned, this all this will also make the Israeli get, get the Israelis get control of our lives in more ways than you can imagine. For example, what's happening in Gaza right now has many reasons. One of them is the war. Uh, this wall makes the Israelis prevent the food, gas, medicine from entering Gaza while they are bombing it. Right now in Gaza there is no food, and the people there are starving, starving to death. Because uh, the lake of uh, sorry, there is no food, and the hospital sorry, there is no food in Gaza right now, and people there are starving to death. Uh, medicine uh, hospitals doesn't work anymore because of the of the lack of uh, of medicine and gas, which made the life of uh, of people in Gaza much harder than this than they than the, than it is, which were. Uh, uh, we're bombing everywhere. There is no safe place they can go to. The the Palestinian also called the wall as a discrimination wall because it's the main purpose of it, the main hidden purpose of it. They just want to steal more and more lands from the Palestinian to to make the Israeli country bigger uh, in space. Uh, in the end, this wall uh, just, oh, it's not just a wall who, that, who's just existed. I have uh, pictures of it. Uh, it's not like other walls. Uh, it's, it's just taking our lives more and more and every day and every day. And it's killing us, uh, stealing our lands, uh, our, our lives, our, uh, our family mem memories. Uh, and so on. The walls are around eight meters high and uh, surrounded with an surrounding with uh, with an electronic uh, electronic uh, electronic devices that can kill you if you just go near them. Uh, with the uh, with the person, oh, he's not a person, with uh, someone with guns that might kill you just because he was suspended or he suspended that you were, you were going near there. Uh, uh, this is the, the watchtower I told you about. In that window, there is the, there's someone with a weapon who's also, uh, who's, uh, who has, who has the the order to kill any Palestinian get near it without any hesitation? That uh, this woman were trying to enter the what they call borders, but they are prevent. Uh, they are they can do it. They they're banned. We as a Palestinian doesn't uh, doesn't and don't uh, like the like the wood. It's ugly, so we draw it at it. This wall uh, also, in this picture, it's a very old picture. <clears throat> it's a very old picture that uh, that shows the, the space between the Israeli jeeps who can go near the near the wall without any without any problems. Or difficulties. Meanwhile, the Palestinian can't can't build their homes, their houses, can even walk beside that wall. And this is how much we we are far away in Ramallah from Jerusalem. It's around uh, from where I live. It's around fifty minutes. Sorry, fifteen minutes. Uh, from Jerusalem, but uh, but if I want to go right now, I'll need maybe two hours. That's it. Thank you. Thank that you was really you. good. Anyways, thank you. Yeah. Can I ask, uh, Lemmy, you know, in terms of um, living there uh, beside the wall and, and education, how, how does it make you and your fellow students feel as people, uh, as human beings, when this wall is surrounding everywhere and blocking you from going, as you said, to another town or another city to visit friends, relatives, and it's 
it's 15 minutes away, but because of the wall and because of the Israeli only roads, etc., um, that you have to travel two hours away. Like, so how does that make you feel uh, as a person? I suppose is what I'm asking. As a family member, or a member, I can't really. I feel like surrounded. I don't know. I don't know much about their lives within the internet, the Facebook calls, messengers, uh, messages, texting, all that. Because of that, I know them. But if I just want to visit them, uh, talk to them, meet them, even have lunch with them, it's uh, it's not possible. Uh, I feel we feel really bad and unsafe very much. Uh, the at all the the children and kids who have schools near the near the wall. Uh, some t- some days they have to cancel school because of the checkpoint. The Israelis decided to put it in front of the of the schools uh, of the school's door. They have the list uh, of the names. They get. Firstly, the list of names and uh, the children, the students and the teachers, even workers in school. And if anyone tries to enter the school beside that, he'll get shot. So it's very unsafe even for parents to just give get, uh, get uh, their children to school safe. And we're not talking about 10th grade, we're talking about first grade to ninth grade, who's very, very young. And that uh, that uh, children get checked, uh, their bags, their, uh, their, their clothes, everything. Then the, 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 the person, he's not a person, the enemy who's, uh, who's standing there uh, could decide if they can enter the school or not. So it's really unsafe to to be around, to be right there, or to be any anywhere around. Just another question there, Lamise. Um, and when you described, um, yeah, and it was especially kind of shocking looking at that photograph of Jerusalem over the wall. And I think over here we sometimes forget how close these things are and how far away they are for you as well. So you said it's a fifteen minute journey, but it takes two hours. Uh, could I ask, what would that two-hour journey be like? Like, where where do you have to go? What are the steps? Okay, first, I have to go from my home to somewhere called Colombia. It's it's a, it's a very huge checkpoint for two for the two cars and uh, walking. You have you have to be an Israeli citizen to just go with by the by your car. We as a Palestinians have to walk, and we have many uh, checkpoints, uh, checks. Uh, open your bag uh, when they are in a bad mood. Uh, get off your clothes, and if you said no or try to no, I don't want to do that. You will get shot. So that journey is uh, checkpoints, uh, checks. Uh, you, we have a paper called tasrih. It's a paper that the Israelis give you that you have to show it to the person. He's not a person again. He's an enemy. To the person sitting in the in the checkpoint, and he could decide if it's if you can go inside or not. It and then when you finish the checkpoints and the checks side, you have to walk around fifteen meters on a bridge to go to the buses, and then you can enter Jerusalem. Terrible. I'm I'm very sorry you have to live under that. Um, uh, Would anyone else watching have any questions for Lamise? Yeah, I have a question. Um, It's just appalling to hear about the circumstances that children and students are living under. It's horrific for anyone, but especially for, for children. Um, and I'm just wondering, what is the feeling among students your own age um, in, you know, in the West Bank, 
looking at, at what is happening in Gaza, what's the what's the feeling and the kind of thoughts and conversations that are taking place amongst students your age? We are actually uh, very sad when we saw the videos, listen to the to even listen to the news with the with all the, the journalists talking and how bad it is. And we see the videos of the all the children our age, younger, older, going to to the to the hospitals, and didn't come out, and don't come out, which has made us very sad, and don't in don't have the power to do anything. We just can be sad, uh, stand with them, remember them, by the by everything in our life, even in our lives, even the social media which is a uh, very important part of our lives. The, the Instagram page, I saw, I uh, shared it with you in, in the group, in the WhatsApp group. It's a very effective, effective thing. And uh, I took, uh, the, what's going on right now takes a, a huge part of our, uh, of our uh, lives, conversa- conversations, we're always sad, uh, always thinking about them. I know, oh, I can, I have food now. Maybe next day I won't. And we're all, we are afraid of the situation right now. We don't know what's next. And I, Annie, can I ask Lamis a question? Yes. Keep Halki Awal. How are you doing? Are you okay? I'm good. Type Tamam Tamam. A good time, Yani, for you all. Uh, I would like if uh, Lamis uh, can, Yani, I would like Lamis to tell us uh, in a brief about her Am Ghassan and Abu Ghassan story of being kicked out of Jerusalem in the 1980s or of in the 19 or in the late 1970s. Can you, uh, Lamis, tell us about in a brief about their story? Yes. Uh, they are my grandmother and my grandfather. They were living in Jerusalem for a very long time. They met there, get married there, had some of my aunts and uncles there. And uh, after a short while, my grandfather went present. They arrested him. He was a teacher and always talking about, about Palestine, it's our land, their occupation, which is until now, it's forbidden at schools. So the, he got arrested by just because he said Palestine is our land. And uh, after that, they, the Israelis uh, kicked them out. The family, um, his younger children, his young children who has schools, and we're talking about two, two years old and younger. They kicked them out of uh, Jerusalem uh, and ordered them to live in, he- in Hebron for a very long time. They can't go live anywhere else just because they want to. It's not that easy for them. That's the summary. Jada, Jada, Alamis, you are brave. Uh, thank you for everything you, you have done. No worries. Lamis, I, I have a, another question. Um, so I, I was there uh, in, in the West Bank in 2022. Um, and so I, that's the first thing that when you were speaking in your presentation, one of the first things that struck me was obviously the apartheid wall and the, the amount of checkpoints that you have to travel through just to go from one small town to the next small town to the next small town and how restricted the movement is. But also how close, as you just said in your presentation, actually all of these major towns and cities that we all know well um, are to each other. Um, like it's literally, it's a very, very small place that we're talking about and how close they are. And you don't really get to see your friends and, and all of that. And I, when you do speak to your friends and even your friends in school, what kind of conversations are you having about the, the wider world in, in all of this and what how can, in other words like are you saying things like how can the rest of the world allow this to happen um, 
what would you like to see from us uh, here as teachers here in Ireland, uh, from other people around the world? What, what would people your age in Palestine, what are they saying? What would they like to see us do um, if, if you're having those type of conversations at all? And the conversations we have at school as a classmates and friends, we, to be honest with you, to, to be super honest, we don't want anything from the world. Just get the, the bombing to stop and the Israelis to go and we're good. We can do it, anything in our, in our own. To make the situation clear, here in, in Ramallah exactly, there are a very little, uh, pe- very little amount of people who is really from Ramallah. Most of us is from other cities who their parents uh, came here to work, to study, to do whatever. So we we are from many other place, places in Palestine. So when we just mention, oh, I'm from Hebron, oh, I'm from Janine, we were like, oh, last time I went to Hebron, I spent four hours in the in the in the way. Uh, oh, how hard was that? And we were talking about where we where how how the road went, how the checkpoints was, the checkpoints were sorry, and all of that details. And I think that many people would many people in my age would agree with me. We don't want the, anything that's really hard from the world. We know that uh, most of the Israeli citizens, which they call themselves. Uh, have two or three passports uh, so go go to other city go to other country just leave us alone here we can't even have the passport or the ID without the, the ID that we get at 16 we can't have it uh, we can't have it if they decided not to give us to them not to give not to give not to give it to us for example my mother didn't get her ID until she was around 30. So it's a very hard uh, to, to live here without an ID. You can't get your driver li- driver license. You can't, uh, you can't do master. You can't do that many life, uh, which you, which the other world see as normal as anything. You know? what's, what's getting your driver license? It's nothing. It's just, it's just like a gift your parents gave you when you turned 17. Here you have to do many process and a very long and hard process just to get your ID so you can get your driver license. They are in every detail in our lives just like this. Even our school books, the way you, uh, the way we have to go to school, for example, uh, for around yesterday or the day before they were in Ramallah in the city I live in so I had to go to school around eight eight and a half a.m just to avoid meeting them in the streets because I don't know what they are going to do so I prefer to stay home be late at school and not lose my life That's a uh, oh, it's shocking. Like it's it's uh, very hard to even uh, to comprehend and to understand uh, from us over here, um, given the, the life that we've grown up in. You know, I, I think people get a sense from listening to you of yeah. how controlling how controlling this is. You know, uh, on every aspect, as you said, of your life, it's not just a wall that separates. Uh, Palestine yes. from Israel as what a lot of people believe whereas the reality is the control is seeping into every single part of your life and even into your as you said earlier on um, your your grandparents into their education system they weren't even allowed to speak about the Nakba or any of these things uh, back then so it's literally it's full full control of every aspect of your life really it's hard to be living that way here in Ramallah, it's a little bit quieter than other cities. For example, the cities of Jenin and Tulkarem and Nablus. The children aren't allowed to, to go to the street. They will get arrested right away. Or kill. They, we, they, you can't know what's coming up. So you choose your life or to be at home. You get 
your you choose between your life and you uh, you stay at home you live you do anything you want no you can do anything you want here uh, today at 7 p.m in the morning where most sorry 7 a.m in the morning where most of the students just go to their uh, schools the the schools on Tul Karem uh, said that there is no more uh, face-to-face education. It's only online, which can affect real, which can really affect our education. Lamis next year will be a, a university student. She told me once that she wanted to study law, to be to be a lawyer, so she can defend all of us uh, against any any kind of oppression. Do you still yeah. want to be a lawyer, yeah, Lamis? Well, let's stop sure. that. No, I will never stop that. I will become a lawyer. I don't <laughs> think I will be. Uh, and yani you will be a good lawyer and you go to the ICG to, to, to defend uh, yani all the uh, all the people who are under occupation. Okay, I, I will do that. <laughs> <laughs> no no pressure, I mean. Well, I see, yani, uh, she, she liked to be a lawyer and yani she told me that I think five years ago uh, yes. uh, when you were in at seventh grade yes yes she told me that she wanted to be a, a, a lawyer and to study law in Birzeit University or any other else I still want to do that that's great thank you Do you have any other questions? I was just going to say, I think that's a very good way to end it. Uh, I just want to say thank you because I think the awareness about what's happening in Gaza worldwide has increased so much over the last few months. Like people who's never knew that uh, Palestine was living under an occupation and an apartheid regime now know it. But I still think people don't really understand the experiences of of, of Palestinians living in the West Bank. So it was just so invaluable to get your insight. And thank you so much. No worries, well, you're welcome. Likewise, I'd like to echo what the others have said. Lemis, you did absolutely brilliantly. Well done. And uh, you you will do brilliantly uh, as the time goes on. Well done, seriously. Thank you. You are a great, Lemis. Lemis. You did something that beyond my, my expectations really Thank very you. very brave and yani you 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 did the best and give us in short all the ideas that most of people need to know thank you very much lemis oh, yani i'm looking forward to meeting you soon you too thank you Hello.